So for those of you planning to buy the iPhone SE 3, I thought I'd make a buyer's guide, delving into the main upgrades, what to consider before buying it, and of course how it compares to other iPhones. And so let's delve into it guys, but first make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumours, and with that being said, let's just talk in. So comparing this to the SE2, the main upgrades are this. We have the A15 chip, we have 5G support, we have new camera features like photographic styles and smart HDR4 from the iPhone 13 series, we have tougher glass, and we also have supposedly better battery life. So yes, not a ton of upgrades, and the design does stay the same from the SE2, which of course is actually the iPhone 8, which is the iPhone 6 from 2014. So this is an 8-year-old design that Apple's releasing in 2022 for a higher price. Yes, the SE3 is $30 more than the SE2, I'm assuming this is due to inflation and also the 5G modem in this, but yeah, that does kind of suck. And that brings me to my first point, which is, do consider older iPhone models first. Because if you do take a look at the refurbished market, there are a ton of deals on the iPhone XR and the 11. Now yes, I know these have older chips, the A12 and the A13, but let's be honest, iPhone chips for the last few years have been great. My brother has a XR right now, and he has no issues with the performance, and so I doubt many consumers are going to notice a massive difference with the A15 and the old A13 and A12. And yes, I know the A15 and the SE3 is going to get you longer support, but the A12 and the A13 should get a minimum of 3 more years of support, and that really is enough for most consumers, since most of us do upgrade every 2-3 to three years. And if you can look past the chips, the X and the 11 have plenty of features the SE3 doesn't. For example, a much larger display, face ID, fun colours, much better battery life, and also an ultra wide on the 11, as well as IP68 water resistance. And really guys, that much bigger display and the better battery life with the XR and the 11 are going to be crucial because in today's world where many of us are consuming tons of content directly on our phones, having a much bigger display is going to be appreciated. And even if you do prefer the 4.7 inch form factor, the SE2 is now available through third parties for a much lower price. And as I said, the upgrades between the SE2 and the SE3 are pretty minute. So yeah, there's that guys, but now let's compare this to the new iPhones Apple sells, and this is going to be a pretty short answer because the SE3 pales in comparison to every other iPhone Apple sells. And I guess that does make sense because this is the cheapest iPhone Apple sells, but I do think if you do pay a little more for the 11, or even the 12 and 12 mini, you do get a much better product. In fact, for those who do like smaller iPhones, do remember that once we do see the iPhone 14 series, the 12 and 12 mini should get cheaper, so the 12 mini is going to be 499 the same price as the 11 in the range right now, and really for $70 more to get, the new design, OLED, much better cameras, possibly better battery life, and also MagSafe, is a way better deal than the SE3. And actually, I'm sure that you could find the 12 mini for that price right now through third parties, so once again, do remember that you could consider older iPhones instead of this new iPhone that's basically an iPhone 8. Anyways, let's now move on to some tidbits you guys should know about before deciding to purchase the SE3. So I did mention one of the advantages with the 12 mini is MagSafe, and yeah, that's because we have no MagSafe with the SE3. Now, I do find this pretty odd, since Apple does eventually want to remove the port, and so MagSafe becomes a default way of charging an iPhone. And so surely they want consumers to get used to the tech and adopt the standards, and so I'm not sure why the SE3 lacks this. Talking about lacking features, while the SE3 does have tougher glass on the front and back, it's not the ceramic shield tech we see with the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 13, so this is somewhere in between the older glass Apple used with the SE2 and the better glass Apple uses with the higher end models. Also regarding 5G, much like the iPad Air 5, this does miss out on millimeter wave 5G, which is the super fast 5G that's available on iPhone 12 and 13 models in the US. 
And the disappointing news continues because while Apple has given us computational upgrades with the camera, the sensor itself is the exact same as the SE2, which is the same 12 megapixel sensor we saw on the 10R from 2018. And the same applies to the front facing camera because it's still the older 7 megapixel sensor on the front. So yeah, that is a massive bummer because I was expecting a new sensor with the SE3, but that's unfortunately not the case. But here's a tidbit regarding an actual upgrade with the SE3 and that is 4 gigs of RAM compared to 3 gigs with the SE2, which is pretty nice. And finally, the SE3 is 0.13 ounces lighter than the SE2. Now, we're not sure why this is the case, but that does make me think there is not a physically larger battery in this, and the battery upgrades are purely because of the A15 chip. And guys, I do find that a little hard to believe because as efficient as Apple Silicon is, the main reason the iPhone 13 series saw massive jump in battery life was due to physically larger batteries. And so I was hoping that would be the case with this new SE. Actually guys, a little clarification, but the SE3 does have a larger battery according to The Verge. And so yes, the battery upgrades could be legit. So yes, those are all my thoughts guys. And in conclusion, I really do think you should kind of avoid getting this iPhone. I think there are much better older iPhones you can buy instead. But if you do find this for a massive discount, or you want the specific features this iPhone offers, I guess it's a decent buy. I would recommend though to get 128 gigs of storage. It's a $50 upgrade. And I do think having more local storage is going to future proof the device. Anyways, tell me in the comments below guys, do you plan to buy the SE3? Anyways, thank you for watching guys, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumours. Check out the link above on details regarding the iPad 10 and on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.